So we've got the left hand fork on the bench and it's actually in pretty poor shape. As you can see here on the stanchion, there's quite a bit of spot rusting, but we should be able to get rid of that with a nylon scourer. The fork seal itself is leaking like a sieve, but most worryingly of all is this massive crack in the fork bottom here, probably caused by some crash in the past, which means I'm gonna to have to replace the entire fork bottom. Now the reason I haven't undone the top fork cap yet is because the internals of this fork are still under compression, meaning that the bottom bolt here holds all the fork internals in the bottom of the fork. And whilst it's still under compression, it means we can actually undo it much more easily without the fork internals spinning around. It's usually an Allen bolt and usually a real pig to get out because your average Allen key socket isn't deep enough to reach through the fork bottom to it. So you can either go out and buy yourself a deep Allen key that's the right size or improvise with the right size normal Allen key and a fairly slim socket and extension bar to act as a big leverage handle. I'm going to take this whole lot put it in a wooden workmate type workbench and clamp the fork bottom whilst I work. This bolt secures the damper rod into the bottom of the fork and is usually not very tight, but will almost certainly be locked in place with some thread locking compound and may appear to be very tight. You have to clamp the fork bottom, not the stanchion, because that rotates independently, which is why we can't undo this bolt with the forks in the bike. To compound the problem, they also often have a very shallow head. Take extra care to make sure the Allen key is seated properly and match the sockets to the size of the Allen key. If in doubt, go and buy yourself the correct size long reach Allen socket. So that's all the main bolts slackened off. I can now take the fork apart. Not forgetting, of course, that it's still full of oil. So I'm gonna drain that out first by taking the top fork cap off. Taking the fork cap off is potentially dangerous. It's often under compression from the fork spring and can pop off. You'll often find that the cap comes loose just after the rubber o-ring seal clears the top of the fork. On older fork designs, it won't be attached to the damper rod, so it's wise to do the final undoing of the rag over it to protect your hand. This fire blade has cartridge forks, meaning the inner workings are one complete unit, or cartridge, and in this case the top cap is attached to the cartridge so it won't ping off. In theory, I could have removed the bottom damper just as to drain the oil out first, but I haven't done this on purpose. If I did, I'd have to replace the rubber o-rings, so this is the best option. Pump the fork up and down a few times to get as much of the old oil out as possible. No matter how thoroughly you do this part, you will never get all the old oil out, so be prepared for leakage when you take the rest of the fork apart. So that's pretty much all of the old oil drained out, and it's absolutely filthy. It looks like it hasn't been changed for an awfully long time. Because this fire blade has cartridge style forks, all the internals are basically one complete unit, and we can remove them like that, which makes it much easier and much less likely to lose parts. All we need to do is take out the bottom damper rod bolt, which we've already loosened in the workbench. Very carefully, slide the cartridge out and lay it down somewhere it can't roll off. The dust seal gets prized off next. I always use my trusty and very worn screwdriver for this, as it's so rounded at the end, it doesn't scratch the anodizing or paint on forks so easily, but I still take care. The snap ring sits inside a groove inside the fork leg and stops the fork seal coming out and, of course, the two halves of the fork coming apart. Again, with my trusty old, very worn and round-ended screwdriver, I can prise it out, starting at one end and working my way round. Fortunately, there's little corrosion down here, but be warned that this bit can be tricky, especially if water has gotten down behind the worn dust seal. So that's the snap ring out of the way. Now we can actually pull the fork seal out. If you're a fan of slide hammers, you're gonna enjoy this bit. As you'll see in a second, the bottom bush will not pass through the top bush, which in turn will not pass through the fork seal sitting inside the fork bottom. 
slide the fork slowly in and then firmly out and hey presto. Right, that's the fork seal out and we can see the components still attached to the stanchion. The bottom fork bush, then the upper bush, then usually a large washer and the fork seal. Take a note of which way round it fits at this point. On right way up forks, the seal and washer can just be slid up and off the top of the stanchion. If your stanchion is rough, leave the top bush in place so as not to damage the PTFE coating. So here are the components that make up an average fork. The fork stanchion is almost always coated in hard chrome. It's not as shiny as cosmetic chrome but is much harder wearing. On some modern sports bikes the hard chrome has a low friction coating, often coloured gold or black. This is more fragile than the hard chrome and should never be rubbed down with any abrasives unless you want to get rid of it of course. The bottom bush sits in a groove on the end of the stanchion. It's a steel collar with a split to allow for fitting. It's coated in copper and then a super slippery PTFE coating on the outside. This coating runs directly up and down inside the fork bottom and is very easily damaged. Then the top bush, similar to the bottom bush but with a PTFE coating on the inside as it sits inside the fork bottom and runs up and down the stanchion. It's this bush that will get damaged if your stanchion is rough. You can see the copper coating on the outside of the collar. Don't confuse that with the wear on the PTFE coating on the inside. That's the part that matters. A normal fork seal consists of a steel ring wrapped in rubber, usually with two springs running around the circumference to pull the seal against the stanchion. They usually fit with the writing facing towards the opening, i.e. upwards in a normal fork and downwards in an upside down fork. But check the manual to make sure. Here is a complete cartridge on the bench. It's made up from the top fork cap with a preload and rebound damper adjuster built into it. Then the two washers holding the spring under compression, the preload spacer, spring, and lower damper rod assembly with the Allen bolts that hold the whole lot into the fork bottom. On a non-cartridge fork, you do have similar components except for the fact they are all separate. 